Welcome to today's session. For today, we shall be looking at scheduling in SAP project system. With SAP project system, you can plan various date types, such as basic dates and forecast dates. To perform scheduling in the SAP project systems, open into your project builder, which we already have it opened here. You would have to define the relationship for the various network activities. The relationship basically tells the dependencies each network activity has over the others. So to set the relationship for network activities, we click on the network activity. We click on relationship overview. We then choose the activity which we want to define relationship for with the selected activity. So over here we pick evaluate initial requirements. We check the successor indicator. And we want to use the FS, which is finished start relationship. So with the finished start, it states that when the successor activity can only start after the predecessor activity has finished. This goes to mean that the evaluate initial requirement must start after the gather initial requirement has finished. We also want to define a relationship for internal consulting. I will choose internal consulting. Check the success indicator. And for the relationship type, we choose a start start relationship. So with the start start relationship, it states that the successor activity can start unless the predecessor activity has initiated. So that goes to mean that internal consultant can only start when gather initial requirements has started. Finally, we would want to also define a relationship between gather initial requirements and software design. And for the relationship type, we want to use the finish finish relationship. So with the finish finish relationship, it's stating that the successor can't finish unless the predecessor has finished. This goes to mean that software design can only be finished after gather initial requirements has finished. So now that we've defined the relationship between the various activities. We then go ahead to define the durations for the various activities. So when you choose the activity, scroll down to scheduling, normal duration. So for gather initial requirements, put a duration of seven days. 
for evaluate initial requirements, you put a duration of 10 days. For internal consulting, put a duration of two days. Then for software design, we put a duration of 20 days. So after defining the duration for the various network activities, then perform our scheduling. To schedule for a project, you make sure you select the project definition. This is to ensure that all objects below the project definition is being scheduled. Then click on more. Select edit, choose dates, and click on schedule. You then get a system information saying that scheduling carried out. So we can now go to each activity to check if truly scheduling has been performed. Click on the activity and dates. Over here, you can see the duration as you specified seven days. So you can see start date 15th of May, finish date is 26th of May. That is seven days after the start. Also for evaluate initial requirements, can see a start date of 15 and then it's finishing on 29. Now this is so because the gather initial requirement is supposed to be finished before our evaluate initial requirement starts. And for software design, the finish date is 17th of June. This is 20 days after the end of the GADA initial requirement by virtue of the relationship we specified. Now with all activities you choose, you always see a total float and a free float. So a total float is simply the time interval in which an activity starting from its earliest date can be shifted out into the future without the latest dates of its successor or the basic dates of the network being affected. The free float, on the other hand, is the time interval in which an activity starting from the earliest dates can be shifted out into the future without the earliest dates of its successes or the basic dates of network being affected. It is also important to know the type of scheduling, which is being used to find out the type of scheduling being used, you choose the network. Then under scheduling, see scheduling type forwards. 
So we have various scaling types, forward, backward, scaling dates, only capacity requirements. So with the forward scaling, the system schedules the network from the first day onwards. It is usually used on projects which you know the start date, but you do not know or you are not sure of the end date. Backward scaling, on the other hand, it's when you know the end date, but not sure of the start date. After you scheduled, you save. So this brings us to the end of scheduling in SAP project systems.